Bless Kampare, Africa's biggest political betrayal. Bless Kampare is a former Burkina Bay politician who was president of the country from 1987 until 2014. He was a close associate of President Thomas Sankara in the 1980s, and in October 1987, he organized a coup d'etat that resulted in Sankara's murder. Following Sankara's death, he pursued a rectification campaign that reversed Sankara's Marxist and third world-less policies. He was elected under the unfair elections and conditions in 1991, 1998, 2005, and 2010, and his attempt to rewrite the constitution to extend his 27-year term triggered the 2014 Burkina Bay Revolution. Hello viewers, welcome to another episode on the channel, and we take a look at one of the biggest political betrayals in African history. But before we get into this, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and click the like icon, turning on notifications so as to be notified in our upcoming videos. Kampare's Earlier Life Bless Kampare was born on February 3, 1951, to a family of the Morsi ethnic group, one of the upper Volta prominent ethnic groupings, and raised in the town of Zinyari, near Ouagadougou, and he has been married to Chantal Kampare since 1985. He went to military school in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and then obtained para commando training in Rabat, Morocco, from 1978 until 1981. He was a section commander and then a company commander in an upper Volta para commando regiment. Kampare and Sankara see eye to eye. Kampare met Thomas Sankara in a military training camp in Morocco in 1976, and the two became close friends after that. In 1981, Kampare was assigned head of the National Commando Training Center at Po. When his friend and colleague, Captain Thomas Sankara, resigned from his government post in 1982 to protest policy decisions and got intimately involved in national politics. A year later, when another power struggle saw Sankara imprisoned, Kampare gathered the commando unit at Po and with Ghanaian and Libyan assistance, he launched a coup that placed Sankara as head of state on August 4, 1983. Along with Kampare and Sankara, two additional military commanders, Commandant Jean-Baptiste Ligani and Capitaine Harry Zongo, assisted in organizing the coup and all held positions of authority in the country. Kampare betrays Sankara. Kampare, who was modest and humble, was willing to leave the public business of politics in Upper Volta, afterwards renamed Burkina Faso, to the more dynamic Sankara and the other two co cool architects in 1984. However, that changed in 1987, when conflicts over security and other strategic concerns allegedly sparked an October 15th coup led by Kampare, Zongo and Lingani, which installed Kampare as president. Before Kampare came to power, Sankara's regime was already facing trouble by 1987. The city Ouagadougou was flooded in hateful flyers distributed by union and student organizations with whom Thomas Sankara had opened clashes. The day before his death, he spent the most of his night composing a speech in the hopes of bridging the ideological claims that were widening between his government's battling parties. More pressingly, he had a thought that his right-hand man, Bless Kampare, was organizing a coup. Sankara, determined to root out corruption, established public courts that prosecuted almost 1,000 government officials and civil workers for misusing and stealing public funds. Many people lost their jobs, many of them without due reason, and many of the country's elite had grown to despise Sankara's bold changes. Kampare, who was a close friend and supporter of Sankara, had lost confidence in the revolution, leading to Sankara's assassination during the coup. And Kampare, who claimed not to have planned the coup with much thought, was said to be grieved by his friend's early passing. The betrayal continues. Kampare served as a new regime's head of state, focusing on economic liberalization and eventually limited political change. Zongo and Lingani were important members of the administration until 1989, when, after disagreeing with Kampare on economic problems, they were accused of plotting against him and executed, allowing Kampare to pursue his own agenda. With the adoption of a new constitution in 1991, multi-party politics were reintroduced, and a presidential election was conducted later that year. Kampare was elected to a seven-year term after resigning from the military to run for president as a civilian. However, he ran unopposed since opposition candidates boycotted the election, in protest of Kampari's reluctance to organize a national conference on political reform. He was re-elected in 1998 in an election boycotted once more, although this time just by the major opposition candidates and was also re-elected in 2005 and 2010, refusing to step down. Blaise Kampari encountered significant controversy and social unrest in addition to the electoral boycott in 1991 and 1998. Opposition parties questioned his ability to run in the 2005 election citing the passing of a constitutional change in April 2000 that restricted a president's term to five years and required that it may be renewed only once. They said Kampari was ineligible to run 
since he had already served two terms. Kampari in turn argued that the statute could only be enforced retrospectively, which the country's constitutional council agreed with. The fall of Kampari. In October 2014, a plan was launched to remove presidential term limits by altering the constitution, allowing Kampari to potentially serve more terms as president. It resulted in the most serious threat to his 27-year rule. Burkina Bays came to the streets in large numbers to protest the proposed change. On October 30th, the protests got increasingly violent, with protesters burning down official buildings, including the National Assembly. Kampari responded to the unrest by proclaiming a state of emergency, dismissing the administration, and vowing to hold discussions with the opposition, but this did little count to the demonstrations. Later that day, the commander of the military forces confirmed the dissolution of the government, declared the dissolution of the National Assembly, and declared the establishment of a transitional administration. Kampari originally insisted on remaining as leader of the interim administration, but after strong opposition, he resigned on October 31st. Conclusion In the years following his ascension to power, Kampari faced a difficult task in overcoming his reputation as the murderer of Thomas Sankara, his friend, who had attracted a lot of followers throughout Western Africa and in the 1990s. Kampari was accused of involvement in civil conflicts in Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Angola. He did, however, become a renowned regional leader, frequently mediating disagreements in neighboring Western African countries. He also served as a chairman in many regional organizations, including the Organization of African Unity, the Economic Community of West African States, and the West African Economic and Monetary Union. That brings us to the end of the video, and if you found the video informative enough, do mind to give us a thumbs up. And if you love such contents, ensure to subscribe and turn on notifications so as to be notified on our next uploads. Thanks for watching.